This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Widmer here, along with at the Mark Weber. Dub them ease. And we are back for another edition of the Onside Kick right here on Mosevel Podcast, your one-stop shop for everything in the world of football and the NFL. And Mark, this is a special podcast. Where it sure people is. People coming back might be wondering, whoa, guys, you guys don't do laundry. Because last week I saw you, you were in these clothes. This week I'm looking at you. You're in these clothes, and that's because we pre-recorded this podcast. This one is pre-recorded a week before because I will be in California as you guys are watching this, and Dave and I will be at VidCon in Anaheim, so we're pre-recording the podcast this week, so that's why we're wearing the same clothes that we wore last week. Makes sense. Starting our NFL previews, Mark, we're basically in preview mode now for the next, what, two months per se? Yeah, can't wait. June, July, and then August, we get into prediction mode, and then it's basically a full snowball until September and football is back. One thing I forgot to tell you is about two weeks ago, I was watching NFL, um, the NFL channel. Mm -hmm. Guess what they were playing on NFL Network? What's that? They were doing a replay of NFL Red Zone from week 12. So basically, if you watched the NFL Network that day, Mm -hmm. it was like you were watching Red Zone from week 12. Nice. So I sat down and watched it. I was yeah. like, I love, I love Red Zone. Plus, you do I love Red Zone. Plus, after watching it, I was just like, you know what? I miss football. Me too. I want football to come back, but sooner or later we will have it. Mandatory mini camps, OTAs starting up and ending, and we're getting football closer and closer. Before we get into our preview of the AFC East, a little bit of housekeeping here. For you to start off the podcast, first off, if you want to support the channel, make sure to check out our Patreon link, patreon.com backslash most valid podcast. Also, you can check out our store. That link is in the description as well. Go get yourself an MVP t-shirt. You can also go to MVP most valid podcast.com. Check out everything for MVP each and every day. And last but not least, Apple podcast, Apple iTunes. Make sure to give the onside kick a five star rating and type in a little something about why other people should listen to the podcast, it would really mean the world to us. But, Mark, we're kicking off our previews talking about the AFC East and how we're going to do it. We're going to go through the teams, starting at the bottom, going through the top. So we'll start with the Jets, then we'll go to the Dolphins, then we'll go to the Bills, then we'll go to the Patriots. So we'll start off with the New York Jets. And the first thing I want to ask you about the Jets has to do with a certain Sam Darnold, because yep. when we did our first round reaction to the NFL draft, you were not able to be on that podcast. It was myself, it was Sean sitting there, it was Dave sitting there. Mm-hmm. So what I want to ask you is almost a similar question that we asked last week about Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Because there's stories coming out this week, Sam Darnold getting more for, more first team reps than Teddy Bridgewater. No surprise. So I want to ask you, Mm -hmm. when is Sam Darnold going to start this year for the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets? Yeah, here's the thing. The the Jets, they needed a quarterback desperately Mm -hmm. because, sure, some people are still believers in Teddy Bridgewater, but... Or Josh McCown. uh, uh, Don't forget forget about the high school teacher. I mean, I got things to say about Josh, but, uh, (laughs) you know, people are still believers that Mm -hmm. Teddy Bridgewater will be good. But when you draft a guy like Sam Darnold, I don't know. So Teddy Bridgewater to me is just that extra guy in the room. Mm -hmm. They're hoping he's good in the preseason and then Ryan Tannehill gets hurt. Or, you know, Derek Carr gets hurt. Mm -hmm. They're hoping that somebody's going to get hurt so they can have Teddy Teddy look good and then trade him. Mm -hmm. Um, But Josh McCown is this mentor. But he's a mentor who, unlike a Mark Sanchez, is not there to sit on the bench Mm -hmm. and hold a clipboard. He's there to actually play as well. I think that Sam Darnold has a good chance of taking the job in the preseason, but I more expect the Jets to be that team that gets off to a slow start, and then week four, week five, they go, all right, just put the rookie in. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're sick of this Josh McCown thing right now. It's not winning us games. Just put him in. Um, Josh Darnold is one of those guys where I think he's got a good shot at the starting job, but he's one of those guys who probably has the second most difficult road to that starting job. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, 
you know, the other Josh, uh, Josh Rosen being the the one who has the most difficult road mm-hmm. to his starting job. So, which is weird because he's coming he's the into most the draft ready. the most pro ready. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, but I do think that yeah, it's going to be sooner than later that Darnold gets in there. Week four, week five. That's mm-hmm. my bet right now. Um, he's got a little bit of adapting to the NFL, but the team's not amazing. They're not going to win a ton of games this year. They only won five last year, uh, and that's because they've got a good coach. So I definitely don't expect them to do amazing. Josh McCown's not going to be amazing. Darnold's going to be there sooner than you think. Darnold should start week one. Like, there is no way he should not start week one for this team. And I know I get the whole thing of like, oh, but we've got Josh McCown and we've got Teddy Bridgewater. You don't draft a guy third overall. You don't draft a guy, what, he was the second quarterback off the board? Some would say he should have been the first. You don't take him with the third. You don't trade up to basically, like, you traded up, got out of the second round completely to then say, no, wait, kid, you're going to hold a clipboard on the bench. That would be like when the Eagles traded up for Carson Wentz if they went, nah, it's cool, you're going to hold a clipboard on the bench. They were expecting him to. But, but he performed better than they thought. But also, the quarterback situation for them was not what the Jets is. Like, mm-hmm. Josh McCown is a journeyman quarterback. You want that to be your starter? Teddy Bridgewater is coming off of a major leg injury. Like, there were questions, is he even going to play? It's and, impressive that he gets a chance to play in the well, NFL. And here's the thing that's interesting about it is, mm-hmm. and you know me, Mark, I was all for let's re-sign Teddy, yep. have him be the backup, he'll eventually be the starting quarterback again for the Minnesota Vikings. I was all over that, being a Vikings fan. But you know it's not good when the Vikings go, no, we're going to let you walk. And the only team that really wanted Teddy Bridgewater was the Jets. And the Jets are the team he goes to. Because let's be honest, if any other team was giving him an offer, except for maybe the Browns, he'd pick them over the Jets. So to me, it would be ludicrous for Sam Darnold not to start week one. However, let's say... The Jets are ludicrous and don't because that could happen. The Jets haven't made the best decisions in the past. To me, there is no way he gets past week three. And if you're not going to start him week one, what better way? Let Josh McCown get beat up by Matt Stafford and the Lions. Let him get beat up by Ryan Tannehill and the Dolphins. All right, kid. Your first game is going to be against the winless Browns. They were 0-16 last year. They're probably 0-2 this year. Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, go ahead and show them that you should have been number one Mm -hmm. in Cleveland. It'd be nice. It'd be a good story, that's for sure. I definitely think that he's a guy who probably should be out there week one. Mm -hmm. I just kind of feel like they're not the team that's going to take a shot. either. But I mean, maybe that's a reason to keep McCown out there like because not McCown's the, not amazing. Like, they're not even the toughest. Like, the the Lions, like, yeah, you've got Matt Stafford. And but, Matt Patricia, who's seen you before. But that's the thing. Like, not just seen you before, but, well, he he hasn't seen Sam Darnold before. You're talking no, about he's the seen Jets, the team. though. Yeah. But the thing is, we don't know what that defense is going to look like week one for Patricia. It's not mm-hmm. like... Matt Patricia's here, boom, snap of the fingers. Well, the team as a whole. Here's, yeah, and here's my defense that I've just implemented. Then you have the Dolphins where Ryan Tannehill coming off of a huge knee injury. What is he going to look like this year? That team for the Dolphins, are they going to be that team we saw two years ago that finished second in this division? I don't even know. So to me, I look at it and go, your schedule's not even that tough to start the season. Just throw Sam Darnold out there. Just throw him out there. You drafted him for this reason. Mm -hmm. Go let him play. Because he's not going to learn by holding the clipboard behind Josh McCown. I just I just can see the Jets doing it. Mm-hmm. I can see the Jets saying, "Well, the Jets being the Josh Jets. McCown is out there. We're going to yep. slowly ease him in." Very similar to Chicago Bears and Trubisky. Of we're going to let Mike Lennon do it. Oh, this guy's not doing that mm-hmm. well. All right, fine. Let the rookie play. That's what I can see happen. Mm-hmm. But whatever happens, whichever quarterback plays, I don't care who it is. They just don't have that good of a supporting cast around them. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be that successful this year, anyways. Uh, the team, the Jets team was lucky to be 5-11 and last year, and that's because of Todd Bowles being a great coach. 
he really got players to play above their potential, to play above the expectations. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if he can do that again, fantastic. But the team might not be able to repeat that same success, especially with some of these off-the-field issues and these discipline issues that people are saying are going on with the Jets right now and how Bowles has kind of been very dismissive of whatever about them. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of thing where I think, you know, is he going to be able to have the same type of success? Let me ask you this, and I feel like I asked this about uh, Coach Bowles every mm-hmm. single time. How many more years do you think he's got left as head coach of the Jets? Do you think this, if this is a really bad season and they're a top 10 pick again, maybe top five pick, does he get fired? Like it, I, I don't think the expectations are that high for cause, him. Because here's the thing I always wonder with Todd Bowles, where maybe it's because of the team he's inherited, mm-hmm. but I mean, except for your 2015 season, where you went ten and six, yeah, and finished second in the AFC East, you haven't really done anything. Like you haven't. But really... I don't think anybody expected. Him to. I think it's similar. You finished ten and six your first year, mm-hmm. and then ever since it's been two five and eleven. Seasons. I don't think anyone's really expecting that much out of the Jets. I think mm-hmm. people were saying it's a full rebuild um, that surprisingly has been better than it should be. I mean, this mm-hmm. should have been like a two and fourteen team last year. You know, they have been better they performed better than the roster is uh and last year without a quarterback that was any you know any worthwhile so they they get some good additions of course with Tremaine uh Johnson with Darnold Nathan Shepard out of the draft uh with Terrell Pryor Isaiah Kroll so they've got some good options here but I look at it and I'm like there's not there's not a standout guy there's nobody who I think is really just going to blow up Mm -hmm. and be amazing so I sit there and I go, sure, this team could take a step forward and be very positive and continue these expectations or to exceed their expectations. But I definitely can see them being one of the bottom teams in the NFL, which is what a lot of people are expecting the Jets to be next year, mm-hmm. to be one of the bottom three, four teams in the NFL. Um, and I think that's OK. I think people expect that. The exception being... Uh, with Todd Bowles not being a quarterback kind of coach Mm -hmm. is if something happens, there's this really great prospect out there, coaching prospect, who's doing fantastic things with one of these quarterbacks, one of these young quarterbacks, and go, you know what? We really need a guy like that. Let's see if we can get one of those guys to be our head coach. I think that would be more of a thing to move them than the uh, the record not being good. Yeah, I just – I feel like with the Jets this year, like – and maybe I do – Ask that also because um, one of the articles that I shared with you while mm-hmm. I was looking at just different jet blogs from around, and this one's the jet site on fan site of the Jet Express or the Jet Press. I'm sorry. Um, they wrote an article that I thought was interesting where they basically said the Jets must solve their disciplinary issues before it's too late. And really, the reason why this was brought up was because. 2018 fourth round pick Chris Herndon has already gotten a DWI. So you've just gotten drafted by this team. You're already in trouble with a DWI, yeah. which is not good. Plus they mention how Robbie Anderson, who's a guy that has gotten or received votes, um, might've been ranked in our wide receiver rankings along with a um, 2017 fifth round pick in Dylan Donahue have gotten in trouble off the field. Mm -hmm. So what I'm looking at with bowls is, is this going to be the year where it's kind of like, all right, that first year you had a really good year, but let's be honest. Look at the talent that was on that team. You still had Aaron, Eric Decker on that team. You still had Brandon Marshall on that team. You can think whatever you want. Brandon Marshall is a quality wide receiver though, to have it year one and two, especially when you were the jets that year and your quarterback, basically that was the Harvard guy. That was yeah. Fitz Magic when he was balling out for the Jets that year. He wanted so, a big contract. Except for that one year, you haven't been able to produce wins on the field. Yeah, you got five, but would you rather be five and eleven or actually competing for stuff? Like I'd rather have seven and nine bullshit than five and eleven. Well, of course you'd rather some, have more wins. I some, mean that's some might obvious. say that you're crazy because hey, I'd rather have five and eleven because I get a better draft pick. But also what plays into it is, all right, you've taken over in 2015 and you've had so many disciplinary issues to where is that going to come back, like compound with the 
not getting enough wins on the field to where it's like, hey, we got a young quarterback. This coach doesn't work well with mm-hmm. quarterbacks. Kind of like what you were talking last week with our Ravens one where we kind of mentioned the John Harbaugh thing. Yeah. Do the Jets go, hey, let's get a guy who's going to be more disciplinary, who's going to work better with a quarterback, because we need to turn this around. We got our quarterback. Mm-hmm. We can't waste this guy. We can't waste Sam Darnold's years trying to fix this when it's not going anywhere. And it's definitely possible. Like a car in mud. The wheels yeah. are spinning, but it's not going anywhere. It's definitely possible in that case. I, You know, the discipline issues, they are there, but I don't think they're anything that mm-hmm. crazy. I've seen teams with worse. You know, I've seen teams with more disciplinary issues. Well, I've seen it coaches seems like the Giants under Matt yeah. Dew were worse. I've seen teams that Just had more players getting in trouble, mm-hmm. who've had uh, more locker room cancer, all that mm-hmm. type of stuff. I don't see Bowles as being that bad. What's surprising me with Bowles is that he's been kind of dismissive, it mm-hmm. seems like, with a lot of this and just kind of, you know, not necessarily burying it under the rug or anything like that, uh, but just kind of moving on. Mm-hmm. And that kind of allows people to continue. I think what would be great, cut one of these guys, lay down the law and say, send nope, a message. It's done. No more of this. Mm-hmm. You know, he's from the – his last spot was with the Arizona Cardinals. I mean, Bruce this Arians. was a team where you didn't get to mess around with stuff like that. This mm-hmm. is a team that had some of these guys who were known for uh, some issues, some some attitude issues, mm-hmm. but they performed well. You know, under Bruce Arians, they did what they were supposed to do, and I, I think that's what he needs to do. He needs to kind of get that going and needs to get that under control. Well, and I mean, kind of look at it, kind of the one of the last things we'll look at, unless there's something that you think we haven't hit that we needed to. Overall, for this year, I don't see the Jets being like, we're, we're talking about them first for a reason, because they were last in their division. Mm-hmm. Jet fans don't expect that to change. You're not going to finish higher than the Dolphins. You're not going to finish higher I don't than know. the Bills. They might finish higher than the Bills. The bill, uh, all right. The, I, you know what? I will give you maybe the bills depending on mm-hmm. how their court. Like if they're starting Nate Peterman for most of the year, all right, you can even AJ McCarron. Above I don't know the, about you can finish above the bills. But my point overall is this team's not going to be good. And my main thing is I look at this offense. If you to me make the dumb decision of not starting Sam Darnold. First week. I mean, there's going to be people out there. Why does it matter? We're not going to win. So if you bench him the first two weeks or three weeks, Mm -hmm. what is that going to care? I'm on the side of you traded up to three. You gave away so many picks to the Colts to secure your guy. You got Sam Darnold at three. You got to go ahead and play him. There's a reason why you went up and drafted him at number three. But then I look at the rest of this team and it's like, below Powell. Yeah, he's decent, but is he really that extraordinary? Thomas Rawls, is he going to be the guy we saw in Seattle a few years ago? I mean, Dimitri Flowers isn't a guy that kind of puts anything special in that backfield. And then I know Jet fans have come after me, but I look at this wide receiver core and it's like, yeah, you've got Terrell Pryor, but what are we going to expect from him? Yeah, you traded for Jermaine Curse, but what are we going to see from him? And I hear all these great things about Quincy Anunwa. I'm sorry. Quincy Anunwa is nothing to write home about. He is nothing that special to me to where I see this team and I just go, all right, fourth place in the AFC's top 10 draft pick will be here next year. Yeah, and it's not really that bad of a thing in some senses because, like I said, this is a team that's still rebuilding. Mm-hmm. This is not a team that is ready to go. And Todd Bowles, you know, with uh, when he had Fitzmagic and Brandon Marshall, I think they were tricked in a sense to think that, hey, we've got a good team. We're ready to go. Like, oh, we got 10 and 6 yeah. after one we're year. We're a real team. We can just plug and play mm-hmm. a few pieces and we're ready to go. And they got that reality shock of, oh, wait, no, this team is not ready. And now they have to really actually engage in the rebuild. And part of it was getting this quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, you got to trade away some things to do that. But with guys like, uh, you know, Nathan Shepard, of course, that's going to be a good defensive tackle spot. This defense is going to need more help in future drafts. They're going to need some wide receivers in future drafts. They mm-hmm. need to have a, I think they need to have a clear cut uh, running back at some point. They don't have that yet. There's a lot still, a lot of work still left to do. You're not in a bad situation if you're uh, higher up in the draft. Like, and I think that the thing that really killed them too 
I don't want to say killed them because you got Sam Darnold for it. But the thing that really, and this goes back to the last thing I'll say about the Sam Darnold starting, is I I would feel like you'd have to start him week one because I look at most of these draft picks and I go, if you would have kept where your pick was, because weren't they sixth? Were they they moved up six from six? Sounds, yeah, that sounds because that's right. where the Colts were. So they yeah. moved up from six to three, and then gave them like I want to say it was two seconds for that third pick. So it's like looking at obviously how the draft played out. Mm-hmm. You could have stayed at six. You could have even gotten a Josh Rosen at six. You could have gotten a Allen at. Although six. they were saying the only guys that the Jets wanted were Darnold or Mayfield. Oh, I know. Had they got one of their guys, yeah. so it's that. But I also look at it on the flip side of if they don't start Darnold right away, or if Darnold comes out after they start him like week four and he's not as good as we expected. Mm-hmm. Will Jet fans in the back of their minds go, man, we could have kept the pick. We could have just got Rosen and taken two guys oh, in the I'm second sure round. They could have helped this team. If things team, go that like, way, they will. But, I mean, look at Jared Goff. I don't expect them to go that way, mm-hmm. though. I, I ex- I'm just saying that you look at a guy like Jared mm-hmm. Goff, things didn't work out rookie year, but then he comes in and all of a sudden he's looking like one of the hot young quarterbacks. Because he was matched with a coach it, that actually understood. It doesn't necessarily matter to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think anyone long term, you know, let's say Dan – Sam Darnold has an average to to good to great whatever Mm -hmm. career, no one's going to look back and be like, man, he should have played those extra three games. Yeah. My whole thing is down to the root of it. I think he should start week one because, like you said, it doesn't matter to sit him. Like, it's not going to hurt him Mm -hmm. to play week one. Plus, is he really that much below Josh McCown or Teddy Bridgewater? Obviously not Bridgewater. He's getting more first-team reps than him. Number two, I feel like this season, although a lot of people coming into the draft were like, man, we want, like, it's Jeremy Bates. He's going to be a good guy to work with Sam Darnold. I think in the end, what this season will be for the Jets is ownership will look at it and go, hey, you know what? Why don't we do what basically the Rams did? Todd Bowles, I'm sorry, you're gone. Let's get a guy that's going to work with this quarterback and bring out his full potential. Might not be this year. Might be at the end of next year. But I think either this year or next year, Todd Bowles might be so that they bring in a coach that could bring out the full potential of Sam Darnold. Because he is, really to me, the key to this rebuild. If they want to get out of the cellar in the AFC, they're going to need Darnold to play well and get all of his potential untapped out on that field. Anything you think we missed or that you feel like we didn't touch on when it came to the Jets? No, not necessarily with the Jets. I mean, I know we focus a lot on the quarterback, mm-hmm. but he's a new quarterback, and yep. and that's going to be kind of the story for the Jets coming uh, this whole season. So that's going to be something that's important for sure, and I, I don't think we're underplaying it. Well, this is where you guys come in. Let us know. What you think down below? I am expecting Jet fans to come after me because I was a little bit fiery in this one when it came to the Jets, but it's all in good fun. Jet fans, let me know what you guys think down below in that comment section.